Hi, my name is Elizabeth Mitchell. Um, I'm originally from Detroit, and I'm a developer and worker owner at Sassafras Tech Collective. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about them later, but they're a small worker cooperative based in Ann Arbor. Um, and I've been pursuing web development as a career for about uh, two and a half years. And um, today I'll be sharing with you uh, my experiences related to um, diversity in the workplace. So let's start by silently reflecting for a moment. Um, imagine a time when you hid parts of yourself. Where were you and who was around you at that time? And how did you feel? So just think about a time where you weren't yourself. Um, and it was because the people around you didn't make you feel like you could comfortably be yourself in that space. Okay. Now think of a time where you felt at ease and comfortable about who you were or who you are. Um, this can be from your present or your past. And what does that place look like? Sorry, I'm not advancing any of the slides. Okay. Um, what does that place look like? Um, and who's there? And how does it, how does it feel? Okay. Um, so thanks for thinking about these questions, and we'll come back to them a little bit later. So at one of my earliest tech jobs, um, I worked at a, uh, a development shop in Berkeley, Michigan, um, which is a suburb of Detroit. And it was one of the most diverse teams that I've ever worked with. Um, the group represented individuals from many nationalities and ethnicities. And the owner brought on people who he thought were bright and good at coding. And I think um, he was an Asian American business owner. And I think it was important to him to bring on people who had been excluded from technology careers based on their identities. And with each new hire that they were bringing on, um, it was improving its age and gender um, and racial diversity. So despite the diversity of this team, this was the first and only time I've experienced overt racism in a place of employment. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, one of my coworkers used violent language that specifically targeted African Americans um, on three separate occasions. The first two times were racial slurs. Um, and then the last time happened during the workday in front of everybody in my workplace. Um, and she was discussing a recent purchase of a handgun um, in relation to a neighbor who made her feel uncomfortable. And the neighbor happened to be black. And she also shared that she found it hard to distinguish between her neighbors because, in her words, all black people look alike. Um, my coworker who lived in the same city that I did um, which is a racially ethnic diverse community in Metro Detroit, she couldn't see the differences between her black neighbors um, because she wasn't seeing those people as whole people. Um, racism clouds a person's ability to see each individual person as a whole person um, rather than a caricature or a monolith. Um, and Toni Morrison writes that oppressive language does more than represent violence. It is violence. It does more than represent the limits of knowledge. It limits knowledge. So in encountering moments of oppression, um, part of me wants to respond with, what? Which is from Despicable Me, or ridiculous, which is a spell um, from Harry Potter. Um, but you can't laugh off discrimination and violence or wish it away. Um, my coworker's willingness to use a weapon um, in a violent way against a people group indiscriminately based on their identity was extremely violent. And to experience that type of violence in the workplace was extremely frightening. Um, and you can't shake off that person's words and never see that person again. You could do that if it was someone on the street, but it's not possible to do that um, at work. And this is a person that you sit across from or that you share a room with on a regular basis. Um, so when we continually tolerate this sort of violence in the workplace and this type of language, what it does is it creates conditions for unhealthy workplaces. It impacts not just the people groups who are targeted or talked about, but everyone else in the room, regardless of identity. Um, and people of color, women of all races and ethnicities, and other marginalized groups face a lot of discrimination on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and tech culture is just a small subset of that. Like, we, we face it both at work and in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and so when we go to work, we don't want to be in workplaces where we're viewed as a caricature and not seen as a whole person. And we don't want to come to work to experience discrimination and oppression, no matter how subtle or overt that discrimination might be. 
In the long term, places that tolerate and exacerbate discrimination, they just won't be places where people can sustainably remain. Okay. So here's what I've learned from working in different workplaces in tech. Um, and it's from places where I've thrived at and places where I felt uncomfortable. People cannot contribute their best if they are wearing masks. And each individual, each of us, is responsible for trying to remove the masks that we hold in our workplaces. And employers have a responsibility to promote places that are not oppressive, um, where people are allowed to be their whole selves. So what does it mean to wear a mask at work? It means that the, part of you, the parts of you that you cherish about yourself are things you feel you must hide or suppress. If you happen to be Muslim or Christian or Puerto Rican um, or black, these parts of yourself are parts of your identity that you don't need to feel ashamed of. And if you work in an environment that makes you feel less than because of your identity, um, it's a place where you're not allowed to be your whole self. You are wearing masks at that point. Um, additionally, you may be wearing a mask if you have flaws or weaknesses um, that you feel that you need to hide or that if you have particular needs that you don't speak up about. Um, you hide those things because you see them as vulnerability because they might be made fun of or might be exploited in the workplace. If that's happening, you may also be wearing a mask at work. Um, so let's think back to the beginning of this talk. I asked you to think about um, a time where you might have been hiding parts um, of who you were when you were wearing a mask. So I'm asking to you all, um, I only can take a few responses, how does it feel to wear a mask at work? How does it feel to hide parts of yourself? Um, so one person said that it's scary because you're, um, you're worried that you might be, it might be uncovered. Um, another person said that being discovered may make it so that you aren't being your best self because you're so concerned about that. Anybody else? Um, it also may mean that you might not feel like you're good enough in the workplace because you're worried about being discovered as well. Um, and this person said that it's tiring and a distraction um, and that you're, you're spending so much energy investing into keeping up a mask. And one more, this last one. Um, it also can be limiting because it, um, you're, you're not showing your mask at that point. Is that, I'm sorry, I didn't. All right, so we're going to move on. Um, so what does it mean to bring your whole self to work? It means that you're bringing all of that you are to the work you do. It includes your identity, your strengths, your weaknesses, the parts of you that you cherish, and your quirks. Um, so how does it feel to bring your whole self to work? Um, a few more responses. And I can't share all of what you said, but, um, but just that it, you're more at ease when you're able to be yourself, when you're able to share that. You can build trust and actually be genuine in the communication that you're sharing with other people. Anyone else? And I guess what I get from that is just being able to share the parts of you um, that you are, it might be your weirdness or whatever, that, that gives you the courage to keep being whoever it is that you are in the workplace. Okay, I'm gonna move on, but I really appreciate that. So I currently work for a small company called Sassafras Tech Collective, which is a worker cooperative. Um, a worker co-op is a business that is democratically owned by its workers. Um, and I think what that means in terms of culture is that each individual person, even the people who aren't worker owners at this point, they're just prospective members of our group who are considering being um, owners at, a, at some point, um, each individual has the opportunity to impact and shape the culture of the workplace. So Sassafras is not the most diverse company, but inclusion matters. Um, Anti-oppression is being actively, um, it's anti-oppression and also being actively welcoming to marginalized groups is built into our structure in terms of like what our goals are and, and how we go about hiring. That's an important part, an important component of our company. And there is, a, there is conflict, like there's going to be conflict everywhere regardless of um, how comfortable the environment is. People cause conflict with each other. So there's conflict but each person is aware of their own privilege and how that relates to how they interact with people at work. Um, and when someone's words and actions cause harm, something I've never been able to do before in any workplace is I can talk to that person directly and say, hey, you said something and it hurt. Let's talk about this. 
Um, and also we're able to, when there's a moment when someone says something that might be oppressive or counterproductive to save space, we talk to that person. So one person will go to the other person and say, hey, this might make other people in our group feel uncomfortable. We need to talk this through. Um, and that's, that's a pretty amazing thing to do, to be able to um, communicate moments of oppression and actually have a solid, real conversation with someone about it. Um, and it's an imperfect place with imperfect people, um, and they're whole and beautiful, and I love working there. So before working at Sassafras, I worked on a team consisting of all white men and me, a black woman, and I wore a mask most of the time. And I laughed at things that were inappropriate and that made me feel uncomfortable just so that I could fit in. And the environment was one where people's identities and flaws were used for humor, um, which is, wasn't healthy. And so I worked really, really hard there trying to prove my worth in a place where I was not welcome. So this past January, while working at Sassafras part-time and then working at that other company full-time, I started to get really sick. So I would be really dizzy and tired and I didn't know what was going on. Um, and it started to impact my mental health. So I started, to, like, it was like my brain was breaking down. So I was getting like really bad anxiety and depression while being very ill at the same time. And so one day was so bad that at the other workplace I was at, I had to tell my boss, hey, I'm gonna go home. And in that moment, I had the most honest conversation I had had ever with that boss, even though I had worked there for months. And it was because at that moment where my, with you know, my being like not well, my body finally was like, hey, you don't have time for masks. Um, so I decided to join Sassafras full time around that same time. And during that time, I was still going through some really difficult health challenges. But despite these health challenges, what made it really easy, um, what made it easier for me, not super easy, but um, was to just have remote and flexible work and also really understanding coworkers. So there have been days where I felt too dizzy or physically exhausted to go about normal daily activities. My mind was alert, but my body was exhausted. Um, and so I would, depend on how I was feeling, I would work from the couch, I would work from bed, I would work from my office at home. And having remote work allowed me to contribute meaningful work while being aware of and responsive to my physical limitations. So remote work, the slides aren't gonna work probably. Um, remote work is the ability to perform your work from a place other than your employer's primary location. So the, and then the definition that I have for flexible work is the ability to perform your work um, at a flexible time of the day or night. So some of the things that are beneficial about flexible work are that they allow people to contribute at times that um, they're most able to contribute in terms of energy, focus, and distractions, like it might just be the best time for them. Um, it allows people to pursue other interests and commitments. It, it, makes, it takes people holistically you're not just your job. Um, it allows people to pursue, um, to contribute at times when they're most alert. And staggered work in an office may allow people who like the focus time that they get early in the morning or later in the evening, which um, allows for increased productivity and focus. So if you know that your office gets really busy around a certain time, you're like, I'm coming in early and I'm leaving. Um, and that's, that's a good thing for people to do. And some of the benefits of remote work are that it allows people to contribute in places where they feel comfortable. Um, and for people who might experience anxiety, it helps reduce anxiety because you're not surrounded by people. Um, and so some of the people who can benefit from flexible and remote work, it kind of, it opens up things in a really big way um, that I, I don't think we really think about. Like, it's beneficial for people with mental illness and mental disabilities with people who have physical illness and physical disabilities, um, someone who experiences chronic illness, parents, guardians, and caregivers, if they have that flexibility of time or can work, work remotely, that also is really beneficial to them. And anyone who's had a very uncomfortable or traumatic experience, specifically in tech, having that flexibility, if you, if sometimes you, uh, you might, somebody might hit a trigger, being able to like pull back and say, I'm gonna work from home today, that really helps. Um, so. Remote work and flexible work, we have to see them though as tools. Um, you can't just, those two things by themselves don't make for a healthy workplace. It's being able to see people holistically and know that your teammates are people, are whole people, um, and that everyone is equally valued. So I think what's been beneficial is that we're not judging when people use remote work or when people use flexible work. Everything's the same. 
Um, so I think that's been really, really valuable. Um, so that's it for my talk. I just wanted to, I guess, share just some of the things that have really made a hard year um, work for me. Does anyone have any questions? It's okay if not. All right. Thank you.